The Wolf and the Seven Little Goats Once upon a time, in a distant peaceful land, a mother goat and her seven adorable children lived happily in a cozy cottage near the forest, where laughter and love filled the air. One day, the mother goat needed to fetch vegetables from town. Before leaving, she warned her kids about the big bad wolf lurking nearby. Dear children, I must go to town. Remember, never open the door to strangers, and beware of the big bad wolf. He won't spare you if he comes. The seven little kids responded harmonically. Yes, yes mother. mother. With a warm hug, the mother goat departed. Meanwhile, the hungry wolf prowled around the cottage, drawn by the scent of the little goats. He approached and knocked on the door. Open up, my darlings. Mother is back. He growled in a rough voice, but the seven little goats refused to open the door, recognizing the wolf's deceit. You are not our mother. Your voice is harsh, while hers is soft and sweet. Disheartened, the wolf searched for a solution. He spotted a house with helium balloons nearby, and an idea struck him. Inhaling helium, he returned to the cottage and knocked again. Open the door, my sweet ones. Mother has returned. This time, the youngest goat checked under the door and remained unconvinced. You're still not our mommy. Your feet are dark, while hers are white. Determined to deceive, the wolf covered his dark paws with white flour from a nearby bakery. With his feet now white, he returned to the cottage and tried once more. Open up, my darlings. Mummy is finally home, and she has gifts for each one of you. The wolf mimicked the mother goat's soft voice. The wary kids requested proof. Show, Show us, us your feet. feet. Seeing the white feet, they believed the wolf was their mother and opened the door eagerly. But their joy turned to fear as they faced the hungry wolf, ready to devour them with a menacing grin. Didn't your mother warn you about strangers? Now you'll be my supper. The terrified goat scattered inside the house, seeking hiding spots. One hid in the laundry basket, another in the oven, one under the bed, while another tried to hide in a pot. Well, the wolf found them and captured six of the kids inside a big bag. But the youngest, cleverly hiding in the clock case, managed to escape. Planning a grim dinner, the wolf left the house carrying the big heavy bag and headed into the forest. By the river, he lay beneath a tree to rest a bit and soon fell asleep with the bag next to him. Meanwhile, the mother goat returned to find her cottage in chaos. Oh no! What happened here? Where are my sweet little kids? Horrified, she searched for her missing children and heard a faint noise coming from the clock. Upon opening it, the scared baby goat leapt into her arms. Determined to rescue her other kids, the mother goat went out in pursuit to find the wolf. She spotted him sleeping beneath a tree, with the bag of captured goats beside him. She quickly released her little ones and devised a plan to end the wolf's threat. Fetch some big stones, my sweethearts. We'll fill the wolf's bag while he sleeps, she instructed. The little goats obeyed, filling the bag with heavy stones. As the sun set, they returned home safely, grateful for their escape and their unbreakable bond. The next day, the thirsty wolf woke up and rushed to the river, carrying the heavy bag. But as he leaned in to drink, the weight of the stones pulled him into the water, never to be seen or heard from again. Peace returned to the forest, thanks to the bravery and cleverness of the mother goat and her little kids. The Ugly Duckling on a little farm, long ago, lived a cute duck family. Mommy Duck was sitting on her seven eggs, waiting for her new ducklings to hatch. One sunny morning, the eggs began to hatch. One by one, yellow ducklings stepped out of their shells. They shook their wings with excitement. Look at you! You are all so cute! 
But one large egg was still in the nest. Well, it looks like that big egg will take more time. So, she had to go sit on her nest again and wait longer. At last, the largest egg hatched. With great confusion, the poor duckling began to look around. His mother and siblings were a bit more confused than he was, because this duck in particular did not look like his siblings. He was built much broader and had gray and white feathers. What is that? He cannot be one of us. I have never seen such an ugly duckling. How can you say such a thing? That's not nice. Now line up. We will go to the lake for your very first swim. Yet the other ducklings quacked. Ugly, ugly, ugly. The ugly duckling did not know why the other ducklings were yelling at him. He took the last spot in line. Each yellow duck jumped in the river and swam behind Mama Duck. When it was his turn, the ugly duckling jumped in and started to paddle too. He was a great swimmer. Later on, each time the ugly duckling tried to play with his brothers and sisters, they yelled. Go away! We will not play with you! You are ugly! Time was passing, and the ugly duckling was growing up to be different. All the animals on the farm were bullying him. Ugly duckling! Ugly duckling! Ugly duckling! Mother Duck, on the other hand, was doing her best to protect him. She couldn't bear to see that poor child so sad. But as the days passed, the poor ugly duckling was feeling worse. All night long, he would silently cry. <laughs> Just because I am ugly doesn't mean everyone has to be mean. <laughs> no one wants to play with me or even talk to me. One day, one of the yellow ducklings said to the ugly duckling, You know what? You would do us all a big favor if you leave. Get out! Get out! Get out! Huh. They're right. I should go. That night, the ugly duckling flew over the farmyard fence and landed on the other side of the lake. There, he met two grown-up ducks. Can I please stay here for a while? I have nowhere else to go. What do we care? Just don't get in our way. Suddenly, a big hungry dog came chasing the two ducks. They quickly flew up in the air. The poor ugly duckling froze in fear. The dog sniffed and sniffed at the ugly duckling, then turned away. I am even too ugly for the big hungry dog. Ugly duckling began to move along. Soon after, an empty lake appeared. Well then, if nobody wants me, I will hide here forever. Even though he was all alone, he was very happy. One day, he saw a horde of white long-necked birds migrating to the south. How beautiful they are! I wish I could be like them! Winter came and snow began to fall, so it was hard to find food. Cold and tired, trying to forage, the ugly duckling came across a farmer. Poor thing, you must be freezing. I'll take you home and look after you till you grow. Indeed, the farmer took good care of the ugly duckling. When spring arrived, the ugly duckling had grown. The farmer took him back to the lake to give him more space to move around freely. The ugly duckling looked at his reflection in the water, but he was amazed at what he saw. At first, he couldn't recognize himself. He thought there was someone else behind him. So he flipped his wings and noticed that his reflection was doing the same thing. He stretched out his neck and his reflection continued to mirror his movements. Right then he knew that this amazing bird was no one other than himself. Oh, how much I've changed! I look like the birds in the sky! While he was swimming in the lake, he came across a wedge of swans. They took him along and traveled joyfully together. Finally, the ugly little thing was accepted and loved by his new friends, to whom he belonged. A boy at the lakeshore yelled out to his friends, Hey, 
Look at the young one all the way back. Must be the most beautiful swan I've seen. The swan did not know how to react to so much praise. He felt shy. After being mocked for so long, he couldn't believe he was being appreciated and accepted. I've never dreamt someone would call me beautiful someday. I wish I had received the same affection when I was the little and ugly creature. I wouldn't have spent such a sad childhood. Why do people treat others according to their looks? That is so, so sad. Yes, from the beginning, he indeed was a swan. He was just an unfortunate egg, which got mixed up in between the ducks. But now, he was with his real family, and ahead of him was a happy life. Gatito Misifu Gatito Misifu was a lovely little cat living with her mom in a small house. Her white fur resembled pure snow. One day, her mom wanted to go to the market. She wanted to make sure her daughter would be safe and gave clear instructions before leaving. My sweet little girl, I will be back very soon. Meanwhile, you stay home and you do not open the door for anyone. Gatito listened to her mom and started reading a book. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Who is it? It's Sun San Su. Sun San Su, Gatito's friend, was a beautiful brown cat, very energetic and reckless. Come on, open the door. I cannot. Mommy said not to open the door for anyone. Okay, you come outside then. I cannot either. Mommy said to stay home. Come on, she meant not to open the door for strangers. But she was surely not referring to me. I am your best friend, and she knows me very well. Come, let's play. I have a new ball to show you, and we will stay here. Gatito thought about the logical analysis Sun Sansu stated. Okay, but we will play next to our door. Sure, and we won't be late. We'll play for a few minutes and you'll get back inside before your mom returns. And so, Gatito Misifu went to play with her convincing friend. They shot the ball, ran after it, and had lots of fun. At some point, Sun Sansu kicked it very high. The ball bumped into a tree and rolled down the field. The two little friends quickly followed its path to catch it. But the ball continued rolling down the road. The little cats trailed it constantly. They splashed into mud puddles, ran into bushes, jumped into garbage bins. Well, they surely did not notice the time spent nor the place they went. When the sky began to turn dark, signaling the approaching night, they looked around and realized they had no clue where they were anymore. Gatito panicked. Oh dear, what time is it? And how can we get back home? No worries. I can get you back in a cinch. But Sun San Su was completely unaware of their location. He started asking around. How can we go to Swift Road? No idea. Never heard of it. Oh, it's in a completely different region. They received different answers, but none could guide them home. They had difficulty retracing their steps. They struggled to remember the places they passed by. It was a long and difficult trip. When Gatito Misifu stepped on the threshold of her house, it was really dark and late. Her mother answered her knocking with a voice filled with tears. Who is it at this time? It's me, Gatito Misifu! Her mother quickly opened the door, desperately searching for her daughter, but then promptly shut it upon seeing her. Go away! You're a fraud! No, mommy! It's Gatito, your little daughter! Not at all! My sweet little one has white fur and smells lovely. I don't know you. Go away. Gatito Misifu was left outside in the night, tired and cold. She was trembling like a leaf. The wild voices around her and the freezing weather competed to make her shake more. She curled up around herself on a bench and remained vigilant to her surroundings. Suddenly, lightning struck and the storm began. The rain fell in a downpour, and the little cat couldn't help herself from crying all night. In the early morning, her mother went out to check on news concerning her missing daughter, 
at the police station. It was then that she saw Gatito on that bench. Luckily, with the storm over, the rain had washed her, and her original fur reappeared. Oh dear, I was crazy not knowing where you were. I contacted everyone in my phone book and filed a report at the police station. Honey, what happened? Why are you sleeping here in the cold? And why didn't you come inside? I tried to, but you didn't let me in yesterday. What? Was it you? But no, it was a dirty gray cat. Sorry, Mom, for not respecting your instructions. It was me. I got lost. Her mother wrapped her warmly and escorted her home for a soothing shower and some care. Mommy no longer needed to explain much to her daughter about why she should have followed the safety instructions. Gatito Misifu had fully grasped the importance of respecting adults' guidance, and henceforth she vowed never to defy her mama again. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there were three little pigs, Strawy, Sticky, and Bricky, living with their mama pig in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world and make your own way. Go and start your new lives, but don't ever forget, whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad but excited, the three little pigs said their goodbyes to their mommy and set off. After a while, they found a piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest, Strawy, was a bit lazy. He was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. Strawy finished his house in one day. He yelled out to the other piglets. Hey, you guys, I'm already finished. Oh, okay, but this house doesn't look steady at all. Don't worry, nothing will happen. The middle piglet, Sticky, was slightly more diligent and constructed a little cubby house using sticks and twigs. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit steadier than the one with straw. My dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Don't worry, this house is very safe. While Strawy and Sticky were having a great time near their newly built houses, singing, dancing, playing and killing time, the eldest of them all, Ricky, was constantly working because he didn't think much of their ideas. He was the most diligent of the three and decided to build a sturdy house made of bricks. The other piglets laughed. They thought that his effort was useless. <laughs> Why would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? Bricky didn't bother listening to them and worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. The brick house looked lovely and like it could withstand the strongest winds. A day later, a sly and cunning wolf named Wiley arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw and he smelled the pig inside. He thought the pig would make a mighty fine meal. Little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. No, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then Wiley, who was a very big, bad and greedy wolf, showed his teeth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You can't do anything to me! My house is steady enough! And so, the wolf huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house down in an instant. The wolf opened his jaws very wide and bit down as hard as he could. But 
With great effort, the first little pig barely escaped and ran away and went to Sticky's house to hide for safety. The hungry wolf continued down the lane and he passed by the second house made of sticks. He smelled the pigs inside and he thought about the fine dinner they would make. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. No, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. The wolf hey? huffed and he puffed and tried to blow the stick house down, but it took a bit more effort. Eventually, he succeeded. His big jaws clamped down on nothing but air, and the two pigs ran away and rushed to hide in Bricky's house, which was the sturdiest of them all. The starving wolf chased them and arrived at the third piglet's brick house, where he could smell all three of them inside. He knew that they would make a lovely feast. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. No, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, said the third little pig confidently. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. Don't you even try, you bad wolf. You cannot come in this house. Well, he huffed, and he puffed, he puffed, and he huffed, and he huffed, huffed, and he puffed, puffed, but he could not blow the house down. At last, he was so out of breath that he couldn't huff, and he couldn't puff anymore. So he stopped to rest and thought a bit. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof and started to climb the tree. Hearing a scrambling sound, Ricky realized that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney. The piglets quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and got the biggest pot they had, filled it full of water and put it to boil on the woods. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney and threw himself in a plop. With a tremendous splash, he landed straight into the boiling bucket. Yowie! He screamed and shot back up the chimney. The last the three little pigs saw of the big bad wolf was him flying over the treetops, clutching a very sore tail. Mommy was right. Whatever we did in this world, we gave it our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life in their strong brick houses.